Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our webinar today. We are delighted to have our food team joining us. Scott Warner, Scott Borsotti, and Jim Weaver will be presenting on Managing Food and Beverage Distribution, Financials in Business Central. And as a reminder, we are recording this webinar, and we will post it to our on-demand webinar library for you to review again or share with anyone. And you can find our library under our resources tab on our website at anovia.com. We encourage you to ask questions during our presentation, so please feel free to type them into the questions box and we will answer them at the end of our session. So now I'm going to turn it over to Scott Warner to kick off our presentation. Thank you, Angie. Uh, and like Angie said, we do want this to be as interactive as possible, so please go ahead and write your questions into the question box, uh, or if you feel more comfortable, there's a uh, raise your hand button in your control panel. Uh, go ahead and raise your hand, and we can take you off mute, and we can uh, we can have a conversation that way. Um, so we'll kind of get started. Like Angie said, we're talking about managing food and beverage distribution financials in Business Central. My slides don't want to move. There we go. Oops, too far. Sorry about that. So I'm Scott Warner, customer engagement specialist here at Anovia. You can see my contact information below. I've been with Anovia just over two and a half years. As you can see, I've got quite a few years of experience in the grocery sector as well as frontline manufacturing. Along with us today, we have Scott Borsodi, another customer engagement specialist here. Uh, Scott's been with Anovia a little over five years now. He spent multiple years in food service distribution, operations, sales, sales management. He's also had, uh, been using NAV for uh, slash BC for over eight years, uh, and then as well as nine years in supply chain and cargo security. And last but not least, we have Jim Weaver with us. He's the director of new client engagement here at Anovia. Uh, he's had multiple years as sales representative and national account executive in the food service industry uh, with a total of 40 years in food service industry uh, kind of all together. So I think that's important to let you know how much experience we've got as far as the uh, the food team is concerned, our food experience. Uh, so now that we're with that, we'll uh, continue on. Why Microsoft? Over the last decade, Microsoft has collaborated with businesses worldwide to enhance the user experience. Microsoft is the leader in research and development with billions of dollars invested. Microsoft's commitment to keeping its users on the front end of technology advancements for what companies need in an ever-changing world. Digital transformation. Let's talk about digital transformation for a moment. Digital transformation is not simply about technology. It's a business strategy that requires leaders to re-envision existing business models and embrace a different way of bringing together people, data, and processes to create value for their customers and capture new opportunities for their organizations. Digital transformation means re-envisioning how you engage with your customers, empower your employees, optimize your operations, and transform your products. Why Microsoft? As I mentioned in my previous slide, Microsoft invests more than its nearest competitor, allowing you an enhanced user experience. Thank you, Jim. So kind of along those same lines as Jim was talking about, so why Business Central? Why is that important to you? Well, as you can see, Mike, or Business Central is the number one ERP software for small to mid-sized businesses in the world with over hundreds of thousands of customers, and millions of users. It's really the cornerstone of Microsoft's business solutions platform. Uh, they've gone out and like Jim had said, I mean, billions of dollars in research, they have put blood, sweat, and tears into this platform. Uh, they've also integrated it with Microsoft Office 365. So those apps and things we use every day, Excel, Word, uh, email, Outlook, everything is integrated inside the system, as well as it's incredibly customizable to meet your specific needs. As we all know, food distribution, 
everybody's got a little nuanced way they do do a little bit of everything. So it's got to be able to uh, be flexible to meet all of your needs. Again, being that it's built for you, Business Central is built from the ground up to meet a food distributor's needs. It's easily modified to fit every distributor's uniqueness. As like I said before, everybody does things a little bit differently. I mean, we're all moving product from one place to another, but how that's done in the middle, everybody's got their own little nuanced ways of, of cutting costs here or, or uh, things like that. So uh, it's easily modified. Uh, now with extensions, your modifications are easy to carry forward at a lower cost and a lower complexity. <clears throat> So today we're going to walk through a little bit of this in uh, in a live demo. Uh, so we're going to be covering better managing cash flow, cash flow forecasting, cost accounting, cost allocations, as well as the financials and planning. So we're going to be looking at fixed assets, depreciations, journals. We all know that our accountants are spending their entire life inside of the journals, bank reconciliations, budgets, uh, things like that. Jim and Scott, any any kind of I mean, you guys have more food experience than I do uh, in your many years. Anything well, else to add here before we kind of jump into this demo? Well, yes, for me, I, I wish that back when I was in distribution that I had this type of a technology. It would have not only helped uh, me manage my accounts and business, it would help uh, our customers as well. Yeah, every company that I've been, ever been associated with in my career have had, they, they perform these functions, but some do it easily, some do it more difficultly, and most importantly, most of it's done a lot outside the system. And so the, the fact that Business Central can perform these functions easily, put it on your role center, and, and make it easy for uh, an enterprise to have visibility into this data is very powerful. It avoids a lot of add-on solutions, modifications, since it comes this way out of the box. So very, very powerful to the finance team. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, it, it definitely eliminates the, the pen and paper work with the limitations of, of old systems. Now with this being all built into one, I feel like that definitely is an, an added benefit. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and jump right into a live demo here. Uh, so as you can see, I've got Business Central pulled up. Um, today, we're going to be looking at this from an accounting manager's role center. So kind of where our our, C, uh, our CFOs may be living. So if you go into my settings here, you can see you've got this set up as an accounting manager. It's got multiple different roles uh, associated depending on who the, the user is that's logged in. Uh, for today, we're staying in an accounting manager. Uh, as you can see, we have this set to English, but B Business Central does offer multi-language, uh, multi-currency options, depending on if you guys are doing international business or if uh, maybe English isn't a, a native tongue to, to some of the employees, being that this is uh, by each user's login, you can have that set up depending on uh, what their first language may be. So I know this screen's gonna look pretty busy, and maybe your screen won't look so busy as uh, one of the accounting managers uh, with your your company. Uh, but we've kind of got this thing wide open. We've got all the fields uh, open up so we can see all the, the range that, that Business Central offers. Uh, I do want to note that I am not a CPA by trade. However, I have spent a little bit of time inside of this accounting manager's uh, role center. So I do know kind of how to get around. Uh, but if there's any questions, Feel free to type them into the, the questions box there. Um, what I first want to show is just uh, this cash flow forecast kind of down below. Um, so this could be a Power BI report. This is actually something that's just built into Business Central. But if this doesn't meet your needs, there are other options. But it's just kind of a nice tool. When I first log in, this is my home page. This is where I'm going to be spending a majority of my time. And I can see this cash flow forecast, it's broken down by different parts, receivables, payables, liquid funds. And I've actually got a slider down here at the bottom. And as I slide across, you can see month to month kind of what that cash flow is going to be looking like. Um, so depending on how you want this set up, it could be months, quarters, days, years. 
Uh, but again, just a nice tool to have here on your home screen, something I can check. Hey, how are we going to be doing here in, in May? Uh, do I want to I want to know that running total? Because as we know, cash is king. As well on this roll center, anything in this kind of this teal blue would be a drillable section. These are generally your KPIs, the things that are going to be most important to you. Some of the stuff on this screen may not may not pertain to you specifically. Uh, again, being that Business Central is so customizable, we can add and take off fields. Um, but we can see here we've got overdue sales documents, purchase documents that are due today. Uh, and if I click into this, it'll actually drill in. It'll bring up these purchase documents that are due. So you'll actually get a running list here, maybe. There we go. Uh, so anything in red kind of is obviously going to be due today. You can kind of run through here and see what's going on. We've got vendor names, vendor numbers, what the documents are, those document numbers, uh, really just the full, full field of everything you're going to need, description as well. Uh, again, these are all just going to be your KPIs, the things I need to get into quickly. I need, to, I need an answer. I need to know what's going on. Those tiles will be here set on your home screen. As well, like I mentioned, you can have Power BI reports built out. We have a Power BI team here at Inovia that actually has built out some financial uh, packs. Uh, we can actually get those reports to be up on your screen uh, right when you uh, like right on your uh, your home page, if you will. Uh, so again, just really nice functionality to have uh, as as you're kind of starting your day, logging in. I want to know where we're at. I can see that report right away. I don't have to go digging for it. That was a huge part of Microsoft's investment uh, in that research and development that Jim talked about earlier was what do I need to see on my screen? Why do I have to click around to eight different sites to get one answer? They wanted to put everything right here in one. Another piece that I think is important to let you guys know is previously Navision, the NAV, now Business Central, uh, was originally built as an accounting uh, software. So it's been built on top of that <clears throat> for other things. So you've got manufacturing and you've got truck routing and things like that, but its its base functionality originally was accounting. So as you can imagine, this is probably their, their strongest piece inside of Business Central. Uh, today, we're going to be kind of focused on journals and fixed assets and cash flow, and we'll get into a little bit of cost accounting. So we'll go into the journals. As we know, uh, our CFOs, our accountants, they're living in a journal world. So we'll kind of open up one of these cash receipt journals here. And as you can see, you've got a couple options. Uh, you can add as many journals as you want. Business Central allows you to be completely un, uh, unlimited when you add journals. We'll go into this general journal just for today. And as you can see, so we've got customer uh, made a payment on document number and this account number, so which, which uh, customer paid us. Today, it's the Canon Group PLC. Uh, they've made two payments, and then Worldwide Bank has also let us know that we've got a running total in, in there of, of uh, 149, which uh, is what these two totals are going to add up to here. Um, so again, on this journal side, you can scroll through. You can see that it applies to an invoice. You can see uh, the document number for that invoice. As I keep scrolling, you can see what departments. So these were in sales. Uh, again, these cash receipt journals, uh, credit card payments, bank payments, all of that's going to be in your journals here. These are just in the cash receipt journals. We've also got purchase and sales journals, payment journals. Uh, Business Central can handle any and all things that your, your accounting team may have to throw at it. Uh, under fixed assets, we're going to dive into some fixed assets here. So how are we going to depreciate some of these uh, these large items that we've had to uh, buy for our business? So today we're looking like, hey, we, we bought a conveyor belt. We've got a class code of tangible. Business Central gives you a few options. You've got financial or intangible. Uh, you've also got a subclass code. It's not necessary that you have to put a subclass, uh, but it's nice to have so I kind of know where where that's being broken out at. It's also got a location code. So say you've got multiple locations within your company and I need to know which conveyor belt uh, 
we're putting this in. So this is in building two. You can have multiple warehouses so we can specify, hey, this is in green warehouse, this is in building two, however you break that out, but it'll actually give you a location code. Serial number for that product, um, as well as a search description, and then who the responsible employee is. So who's who's in charge of keeping up with this conveyor belt, uh, making sure it's running. Um, as well, kind of down below is a part of that, uh, who's in charge of it. You've got a who we bought it from. So we've got a vendor number here, as well as we have a maintenance vendor number. So in this case, they're the same. The, per, the company that we bought it for also will uh, maintain it for us, but maybe they're not. Maybe they have a third party that does the maintenance for them, or maybe you have a third party that you prefer to do your maintenance for. Uh, so you can have that information down here as well. Uh, you've got a next service date, so you can make sure you're up to date on all of those. So when it needs to be serviced next. So if in this case, it's a conveyor belt, it could be one of your trucks, uh, forklifts, uh, anyway, but the next service date, and then actually on your home screen there, you can set that as a task. Hey, on 817 of 21, we're going to make sure that we have to have X product serviced, and then it'll actually give you a, a pop-up on your home screen. So it's not just, you don't have to come into this card every time to, to double check when the, uh, when those service dates are, are up. It's also got a warranty date. So whether that product is uh, under warranty at the time, whenever you may have an issue, as well as it is it, in, is it insured? So do we have an insurance policy out on this? Um, if it's a vehicle, we've got electronic documents. So you can add a license plate number and a vehicle year. If it's got a trailer, we can put that trailer type um, as well, you'll have here in your description book or depreciation book, excuse me, you've got a posting group of machinery. You also have depreciation methods. So after talking to some of our financial ACs, Business Central gives you quite a few options here. I'd say about 90 to 95 percent of people are running straight line depreciation. However, I thought it was important to show you that in case you don't run a straight line depreciation, you've got a few other options here. Um, so as well, you've got a depreciation start and end date. It's a 10 year depreciation on this product. Uh, and then you'll also have a running book value. Um, with that, we can kind of get into this Mercedes 300. It's got a little bit more information as far as the book value is concerned. Uh, so it's a car, obviously depreciation me method being straight line. We have a five year depreciation. And we can see we have a book value of 48,389. We drive, dive into that, you'll actually be able to see the, uh, the depreciations, the monthly depreciations on this product so far. Uh, so obviously we bought it at 50,000. We've made two monthly payments on it. Uh, so here's just where you're going to see that that breakout uh, is inside of that book value. Um, any questions up until this point? I know we're we're moving kind of quick. I want to make sure that I slow down if there are any any questions. Not yet, Scott. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, also, so you can see this one's got a location code of admin. So this is that Mercedes 300. Maybe this is the the general manager of one of your plants or uh, your CEO, they've got uh, a work car, they need a work car. Um, so you can see, again, you can see who has that car, who's responsible. So it's gonna be JR, which is John Roberts. He's our managing director. Uh, so again, just good information to have here on your fixed asset card. Um, if we do have any insurance, now I'm not sure if anybody will actually use the insurance piece inside of Business Central, but it is good functionality to let you know that we've got. So we can actually go into this Mercedes 300. You can see that uh, we've got our effective date. Insurance type is for the car, it's tangible, and it's uh, with our admin. So a lot of the same information as the fixed asset card, uh, just on the insurance side. So you got our policy number up above, uh, so we can kind of know where we're at. We have we know our annual premium and our policy coverage, uh, and the last date it was modified. So again, I don't know if uh, that's something that necessarily you guys would use all the time, but it is nice. It's a nice to have that is inside of Business Central. Uh, again, I just want to give you kind of a high level overview of kind of all the uh, uh, functionality that Business Central has. So again, we've got fixed asset journals, insurance journals, recurring journal, uh, general journals, uh, a bunch of journals. Uh, so if we go into cash flow, 
we can actually go into that cash flow forecast. This will look pretty similar to that screen we showed you on our homepage. It's going to give us that cash flow forecast, but it's going to be broken out into a what we call cash flow forecast card. So in this case, uh, A. Rojas was looking for what their cash flow was going to look like for December of 2020. You can see uh, we've got our number and description, search name. So if we're going to look for this, we know what we're looking for, what data was created, and then what we're looking for. So here's the, the GL budget from 12-1 to 12-31. And as you can see here, we're, we've got liquid funds. We're going to have about 100,000 receivables, uh, sales orders. And then we're also on here, we're going to have our payables and our purchase orders. So what kind of money are we going to have coming in and what's going to be going out and where are we going to be at at the end of the month? What kind of cash cash flow do we uh, can we expect to have? Uh, and this is always important. We want to know what we're going to have month to month, quarter to quarter. Uh, based on uh, what we may need to be doing in the in the month of month of December. So if we're buying new product if we are thinking about maybe we're we're going to need a new forklift uh new trucks maintenance on those trucks uh maybe there's an end of the year uh sales incentive whatever that is you you're going to know where your uh liquid funds will be will be at or what your cash flow is going to look like at the end of the month uh again or you can break that out even further if we wanted to make this uh, the whole fourth quarter or uh, however, we, we wanted to break that out. And then we go into cost accounting. So we go into our cost allocations. So where are we going to allocate some funds for this building? Zero, zero. You can see we've got uh, obviously the building ID. You can level this. So depending on, on the uh, level of importance to you, it's got fields from 1 to 99. Uh, and I'll get into that in more in just a minute. Uh, you can see when it's valid too, so we're valid until uh, New Year's Eve of 2020. And then the cost center code, so what is this going under? It's under building and the credit to cost type. Over on, uh, on the left-hand side, you can see what we're uh, target cost centers. So we got vehicle work, uh, workshop, and then you got an allocation target type. So we're doing an amount per share. If I open this up, you've got all costs, uh, percent per share, so a couple options there, um, as well as amount per share, and then the shares of that, and then what that percentage breaks out to be. Uh, so then you can see in here, you've got a total share of uh, 2,270. This is that running total of the shares that are being broken out. And if we drive into this, this will be a similar screen, but uh, just a little, another way to look at it, depending on how you like to work. Uh, so again, Cost allocations, we can we have cost allocations. We also have cost budgeting. So if we look into our cost budgets, go into our default here. You can see, so we're looking at this by, uh, by day. If I wanna look at it, what it's gonna look like if we wanna budget out for the next, for by quarter. Uh, obviously, if, if we're looking ahead here, uh, we won't have too much information, so I'll just take you back to a previous set. Let's see if I can make this a little bit bigger for you. There we go. So you can see you've got all these budgets broken out in different ways. So you've got total sales of jobs, and then you've got sales resources, depending on how that's broken out. Uh, sales of raw materials, sales of retail. Um, we go into costs. We've got job costs, so what it's going to take to run that product. Uh, cost of capacity, so we've got direct costs. Uh, under here, we've got variances, some material variances. Obviously, very in depth. A lot of this stuff maybe you will or will not use, but it is. I just thought it was important to show you all the functionality that is here. So you've got personal expenses, so you've got wages and salaries, payroll taxes, health insurance, uh, all of these areas to be filled out so we can budget accordingly. Um, if you've got vehicle expenses, gasoline, repairs, maintenance, taxes, uh, computer expenses, so your IT budget, software, consultant services, uh, maybe you've got a cleaning facility or a cleaning team that comes on site twice a week, we can budget that out. We could put what those uh, costs will be. You can all see our depreciation 
for buildings and equipment and vehicles that we've got going on so far. Uh, your uh, interest income, so how much interest do we have coming in? Interest expenses, obviously this gets very in depth. Uh, and then you can kind of see a net income here at the bottom. Where are we gonna be at at the end of quarter four in 2020? Uh, allocations, calculated interest of assets. Um, and as you can see, if, if we just kept scrolling back, we would be able to see where we were. Uh, but this is a nice, nice uh, cost budget to see where we're gonna be at going forward. I can, I can budget accordingly uh, as we move forward. Any questions on any of that? I'll take silence as a no. Unless Jim, do you have anybody that's written in anything yet? No, I do not. Okay. Uh, well, so that was the main point I wanted to drive home today on the uh, on the accounting side. I just want to let you know that like. Uh, we're going to have multiple fields here. There are more fields we could have opened without making this screen look too messy. I felt like these were kind of the, the core pieces that our accounting professionals would be using. So we've got general ledgers, uh, depreciations, count schedules, cash flow, date lists. Uh, all of this stuff is here. It's built into BC. There's uh, no ISVs necessary, no third party, no extensions, nothing. I mean, Business Central is built to be an accounting software. Uh, so if you've got any questions going forward, you want to dive in a little deeper on any one one piece, please feel free to reach out to uh, to myself or Jim or Scott Borsodi. We're happy to uh, to take you through anything in depth that you'd like to see. Um, so with that, we'll go back into our PowerPoint here. Scott, thank you for providing us a high-level view on how Business Central can benefit any food and beverage company manage their financials more effectively. Yeah, absolutely. Angie, at this time, I, I guess we've asked a couple times if there's any questions. Have you received any questions since the last time we asked? Not yet, but now would be the perfect opportunity for you all to get your questions in so we can have the guys get them addressed. Thank you, Angie. Now for a commercial break, let's talk about why Anovia Consulting. As you can see with this slide, it's it's uh, very busy, a lot of, a lot of topics to uh, discuss. Um, Anovia, at, at Anovia, we have a proven track record uh, as a Microsoft partner, and we are a top five gold level partner with Microsoft, our expertise is implementing Dynamics 365 Business Central. We have over 38 years of experience in business with successfully assisting our clients. Our food team has over 90 years of experience in food service distribution. And with that said, uh, having a conversation with myself or Scott Borsodi or Scott Warner, we come as a free billable, ex non billable expense. We have three locations and over 85 team members across the US. Six implementation teams and a dedicated support team. Our approach to customer care, we have a premier support and professional services teams. We offer training workshops and webinars. And Jim, if I could cut you off there, I think this is probably one of the most beneficial things to a lot of our customers today i mean we've got these training workshops that are fairly inexpensive they're they're based on the uh the business not the not the individual person that wants to attend so you pay one flat fee uh and you can have everybody in the company join as well as our webinars i mean we do angie i don't know how many 
uh, a month, but there's always new information coming out from, from Inovia here uh, with our, our webinars and things, just free tidbits, tips and tricks to, to help our users out. And Scott, since we're doing okay on time, I'd like you to just kind of briefly go back to the previous slide on premier support and professional services. Yeah. Uh, just, to, just to add about the premier support, uh, we have a team in place to second to none on committed on providing you with great customer experience. In addition to our premier support team, we also have a Power BI team. In regards to professional services, um, we have a process that we uh, have in place that has been very successful to Anovia service and their clients. Um, it's all about initiating a plan, design, analysis, approval, execution, testing, and implementing. And what that means is we have a like I said, we have a process in place to follow to prevent any surprises because we have your best interest in mind. Thank you, Jim. This slide here, we have a, a we do regular podcasts. It's called the Inovia Conversation. Uh, in addition to our training workshops and webinars that Scott mentioned, uh, these podcasts are hosted by Jeff Progowski and Steve Waltz called the Inovia Conversation. The very interesting topics that are discussed. All right. Well, Angie, if there are no further questions uh, in the comments or anything, I think we are going to let these guys go a little early. Uh, but we're we're happy to hang around if people want to come off mute or write their questions in. We're happy to uh, happy to take the time to answer them. All right, Scott and Jim, and Scott, I don't see any questions that have come through. I just want to thank you all for the presentation and thank everyone who's on our webinar today, or if you're watching on demand, we thank you for taking the time out to join us. Yes, thank you for joining us, everybody. And if you have any questions about the content we discussed today on this webinar, or we can assist you in any way, please feel free to contact me at jweaver at anovia.com, or you can reach out to Scott Borsodi at sborsodi at anovia.com, or Scott Warner at swarner at anovia.com as well. Thank you very much for your time. We look forward to hearing from you real soon. Take care. All right, everyone, that's a wrap. Um, Jim and Scott have already uh, taken care of my ending presentation, so I just want to add one more thing. We do have our conference page up on our website. You can visit that at anovia.com slash conferences. We will be attending DynamicsCon Live in San Antonio, Texas in September, so make sure you read up on all the details for that and register today and get that discount code as well. All right, well, thank you again for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you soon at another Anovia webinar. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you.